Kelsey. This is my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I am wearing one of my fancy booktube hats, and today I am bringing you a combined book haul for all the books I got in the months of April and May. Um, you may be aware the last video I just posted was a separate haul video, um, a little bit of a chatty video as well, where I showed you everything I got at Book Expo, which was um, the 31st of May and the 1st of June, so that isn't going in any monthly book haul, that was its own video. Um, at the end of April, I didn't think I had quite enough books that I absolutely had to film a haul, so I decided to do a combined haul, so this is actually pretty big and a lot of books, and it's a surprising number of new books for me as opposed to used or bargain books. This is an absolute stark contrast with my March book haul, which was 100% used books. So I am going to start off with those used books, as I almost always do, and also, as I almost always do, I am going to start off by showing you the one book in this haul that I have already read. This was a book that I read a library copy of. It was a five-star book for me. I did a full review of it. I loved it, and I didn't own a copy. And that is A Face Like Glass by Frances Harding. So when I saw a used copy of this, I snagged it up. This is marketed as YA, at least in the US, but to me it really, really reads like sort of wild, whimsical middle grade. I would definitely say this is a middle grade book. It is a standalone about a girl named Neverfell who lives in an underground city called Caverna. And if you're interested in this book, I would suggest that you check out my review, which I will link for. You. Next, I often have a lot of $1.50 used books in my book hauls. Today I only have one of each of those. The 50 cent book that I have is this mass market paperback of The Privilege of the Sword by Ellen Kushner. This is the second book in her Riverside world. The first book in this series is Swords Point, which I also already own, and these are both books that I'm just embarrassed to have not read yet. They're the sort of thing that a lot of my friends, I think, think will really be my thing. Um, they are fantasy of manners, and I think they have a lot of queer characters in them, specifically bisexual representation is what I've heard. The next is the first in a sci-fi trilogy that I've been a little bit on the fence about, but a lot of my booktube friends have really liked these books, and I've sort of been in a sci-fi mood, and so I've thought if I see this for a dollar somewhere, I will pick it up, and I did, and I did, and this is Behind the Throne by KB Wagers. This is the first in the Indranan War trilogy. I'm remembering looking at the back of this book that when this first came out, um, everyone was talking about how, how the back of the book is really pushing it as being like for Star Wars fans, um, and then everyone who read it said, no, this really isn't like Star Wars at all. This is about a woman named Hale who becomes the empress of a space empire when everyone ahead of her in line for the throne is killed. And people seem to really like the main character of this series. And then the last two uh, used books that I have here are used but relatively new releases, and they are both middle grade. The first of these was a 2017 release, and this is The Dragon with a Chocolate Heart by Stephanie Burgess. This is a shorter middle grade book. I expect it's going to be an incredibly quick read, and this just seems like such a charming premise for a book. It's about um, a, a dragon girl who gets turned into a human girl and then, like, starts working in a chocolate shop. I imagine there will come a time when this is the thing I will need to have in my life. Stephanie Burgess has written a lot of previous fantasy books for both middle grade and adult, and I've been aware of her books for a while, but I've never read any of them. And then the other middle grade book I have is a really new release, and that is Karma and Grit Book 2 The Crooked Castle by Sarah Jean Horowitz. I have a review of the first book in this series, The Wing Snatchers, which I will link for you. This is a sort of steampunk, fairy fae fantasy thing, and I'm really interested to see where this series is going. Next I have four books that I purchased new, and the first is uh, no surprise to anyone because I'm already reading this, and this is Space Opera by Catherine M. Valenti. I went to the book launch for this book. Um, at Barnes & Noble in Tribeca, and I got my copy signed, and I heard Valenti read the first two chapters from this and talk a lot about 
her process for this book. This is Eurovision in Space. I've mentioned this book on my channel quite a few times before. This is one of my most anticipated releases of the year, comedic sci-fi. You will hear more from me about this when I finish it, which should be really soon. Next I have a book that was a bit of an impulse purchase, but I think you'll see why. Um, this is Dreadful Young Ladies and Other Stories, which is a short story collection by Kelly Barnhill, who's known for her middle grade novels, two of which I own but have not read yet. Oops. Um, but this is an adult fantasy short story collection, and I bought this after seeing my booktube friend Leah Cooper rate this highly on Goodreads and then say nice things about it on YouTube. I will link her full review. This seems like exactly the kind of weird, dark, whimsical, fairy tale-ish fantasy story collection that I would absolutely love. The stories in this book are Mrs. Sorensen and the Sasquatch, Open the Door and the Light Pours Through, The Dead Boy's Last Poem, Dreadful Young Ladies, The Taxidermist's Other Wife, Elegy to Gabrielle, Patron Saint of Healers, Whores, and Righteous Thieves, Notes on the Untimely Death of Ronia Drake, The Insect and the Astronomer, A Love Story, and The Unlicensed Magician. And if you see the cover of this up close, it is really amazing. When I had first seen the cover for this book online, I had not noticed all of the details. You can see the body of the dragonfly is like the back of a woman's head with like a long long braid and each of the wings is made of like lace and other imagery and it is just one of my favorite book covers right now. I saw a um, discounted copy at Strand, and I snapped it up. Next I noticed that Clockwork Boys was available in paperback, um, and so I bought it. This is by T. Kingfisher, which is a pen name for Ursula Vernon. This is meant to be a sort of um, traditional high fantasy, but through the Ursula Vernon T. Kingfisher lens. I've heard really good things about it. I know it was inspired by her um, feelings and opinions on certain tropes related to like role-playing games, which I'm not particularly familiar with at all, but I think from what I've heard I will still appreciate this as a high fantasy. Um, it is the first book in a duology, the second one is Wonder Engine, and I am waiting for a paperback release of that one to buy them because I've been buying um, pretty much all of T. Kingfisher's books um, in print when I can and in paperback when I can. And then the next of the new books that I purchased is an original fairy tale collection, and this is The Turnip Princess and Other Newly Discovered Fairy Tales by Franz Xaver von Schoenwerth. These are German fairy tales and folk tales collected by I think a contemporary of the Grimm's that were lost because his manuscripts were lost and then recently rediscovered. These got a lot of attention when this book was released because obviously this is just a treasure trove of new information for fairy tale and folklore scholars. And the reason I bought this now is that it's a current group read for the Into the Forest Goodreads group that I'm a member of, so I am actually hoping to read this one this month. I will link the Goodreads group down below in case you want to check it out. And then last but not least, I have four arcs here. So let me explain where each of these came from. Two of these come from the bookstore where I volunteer, and two of them were Goodreads giveaways that I won. I won two Goodreads giveaways over the past two months. Um, so a couple of these are already released, and a couple of them are upcoming releases. I'm gonna start with the ones that came from my bookstore. The first of these is The Queen of Sorrow by Sarah Beth Durst. This is the third book in the Queens of Renthia trilogy. This is the final volume, and it came out in May, so this is already out. I'm really looking forward to picking this up, hopefully very soon. I think this will be great summerish reading. And then the other one of these you actually saw briefly in my last video video because I was talking about this author, and this is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, which is inspired by Rumpelstiltskin. It is 
a novelization of the short story that was in The Starlit Wood, which was an anthology that I really loved, and I particularly really loved that story, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns into a full-length novel. And this one is going to be a July release, so next month. Then we have the two Goodreads giveaways that I won. The first is a copy of The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is a debut novel that is already out. This was another May release. This is the first in a Chinese-inspired adult epic fantasy. I've heard that it's the sort of thing that's like really, um, really heavy, really brutal, really serious about the actual, you know, harsh realities of war, which is important because I feel like a lot of fantasy sort of brushes over some of that. But I am definitely going to have to be in the right mood to read this, and I know that, and I'm just not sure when that right mood is going to hit. I have heard from people who have read this already that it is amazing, and I am very impressed because apparently this author is very young. So obviously this is a debut author to watch. And then the last arc I have is the second Goodreads giveaway I won, and this is Seafire by Natalie C. Parker. This is an August release, and this is a YA title. When I won this giveaway, I had kind of forgotten why I had entered for this book, and then I went and looked at the book description and was like, oh, this is the one with the all-female pirate crew. That's kind of all I know about this book, is that it's YA with an all-female pirate crew, and that's kind of all I want to know. This just seems like it will be a really fun book again to read over the summer if I uh, hopefully get to it over the summer. Because like, who doesn't want lady pirates in the summertime? Come on. Anyhow, that is all for my April May book haul. Um, let me know if you've read any of these or if you're planning to. Let me know what you think. Anyhow, I hope you're having a nice day. That is all. Bye for now. <laughs>